and welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 29 and today verses 15 to 18. And let's read that out. You shall also take the one ram and Aaron and his son shall lay their hands on the head of the ram and you shall slaughter the ram and shall take its blood and sprinkle it around the altar on the altar. Then you shall cut the ram in its pieces, wash its entrails and its legs and put them with its pieces in its head. You shall offer up in smoke the whole ram on the altar as a burnt offering to the Lord as a soothing aroma an offering by fire to the Lord. OK, so here we have some more another offering, you know, now this is going to be a, a regular sin offering. Here you have another offering. This is going to be a burnt offering. And those are, uh, we find those throughout the book of Genesis and coming up to this space, uh, kind of the whole thing is offered. Now this is Aaron and his sons. They are participating now and they are going to put all of them, double hands, two hands. They're laying their hands on the animal. Remember we're talking about a transfer of sin. And there's a question that probably comes in some minds here. It says it's a, the smoke goes up and you know, it's a sweet smelling aroma. And God like, God here, God, God uh, smells the burning flesh, and he really kind of likes that. Do, do you really think that that's the way it, it is? Does God love death and destruction? I mean, he initiated many of these sacrifices only after human sin. Remember that God gave them life if they would have stayed with him. If they hadn't gone off in sin, we would have never seen any death. Death came only through sin. God's plan was not for humans to sin. I know there's certain churches and groups that teach a Felix culpa, you know, happy fault. The, when Adam and Eve sinned, it was a good thing. Believe it or not, there's people that teach this. Certainly not in my denomination, but they're, uh, the Roman Catholic and the Mormon will talk about this, that uh, it's a good thing that, that the Mormons say that Adam sinned because he couldn't have joy without uh, the results of sin that happened. And so kind of a, kind of a really creepy bit. But anyway, here you have this, uh, this ascending aroma, and does God like it? Well, God's not in favor of death. He wants life. He doesn't even want, uh, he prefers obedience to sacrifice, the Bible tells us. Now, I think the thing that's sweet smelling about the aroma here is not, not that an animal had to die, not that somebody sinned and now, they, now that a person or an animal has to die. Now Jesus has to die for those sins. That's not the sweet smelling piece. The sweet smelling piece is that some people, are, that people are willing to repent, that people are willing to turn back to God and to receive his help and and to uh, lay themselves at his mercies and receive his, his gifts and his, his power to overcome, receive his forgiveness and, and newness of life that he can give us and longs to give you and I every day. That is pleasing to God, the repentance, the people responding. Remember, by the way, in the Bible, repentance, you may or may not know this, repentance is always a gift we do not generate repentance. There's not like some little good spark here or somewhere in my body or in my brain or in my heart that's that's a little spark of deity or divinity and, and there's some little piece of goodness in me. No, the, Paul said, in my flesh dwells no good thing. There is nothing that rises within the fallen human nature that just says, hey, I'm going to be good today. Every time we have any repentance, anytime there's any good works that come out of our, uh, through our experience, those are gifts from God. Those are given to us. Those are uh, inspired, led, I initiated by God. Any good thing that happens, we can't take credit for it. Uh, we're glad the good things happen. We want them to happen. We, we, want, we want to cooperate. But the good that comes into this world doesn't come from you, from some little part in you that's just some little tiny good part. It becomes because God grants you the gift, the opportunity to repent, and in you, there's a working and you repent. So what God loves is not that anyone has to die or any animal has to die. God loves that people are willing to return to him. And that is pleasing to him. And when this goes up, the smoke going up talks about, you know, the aroma going up and God smells and all that. This is, you can imagine the picture, you know, as the people are watching this and here's the sacrifice burning at the altar and the smoke is going up. This is going up where? It's going to God. God is receiving uh, the repentant, you know, the that piece. So friends, I think that's what God enjoys. God is not, uh, doesn't like violence. He doesn't like death. He does a strange work at an unusual point in time. At the end of history, there will be some destruction from people who've chosen evil. They've chosen the wrong stuff, and God will let them have their choice. They'll be destroyed. But in the meantime, he, he pleads with us, Oh, Israel, I don't want you to die. I want you to live. And so he talks to us today and says, 
come to me. Everybody who has uh, is heavy laden, I will give you rest. I will take away your sins. I will give you rest and peace. You must accept uh, Jesus and he will transform you. I hope that he does that for you today. I hope you're saying yes to Jesus. All right, carry on some more tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Thank you.